The problem that was historically known as the maximum elongation of Mercury and Venus. Uh, this was known back in the ancient times also that Mercury and Venus are always seen close to the sun. So in the, uh, at night when you're trying to view Mercury and Venus, you look towards the western sky and when the sun sets, you look up in the sky towards the west. And Mercury can be seen up to 28 degrees above the western sky and Venus can be seen up to 47 degrees from the western sky. So there, Mercury and Venus are never far from the, the sun. So if this is the west, for example, uh, the sun is setting, well, according to, let's do it like this. This is north, west, east. So if the sun is setting here, Mercury can be seen over here up to 28 degrees above the sun. If it's not seen, 28 degree, uh, up to 28 degrees from the sun, then that means the Mercury set uh, ahead of the sun, before the sun, that means you have to wake up in the morning to see it, okay? And Venus can be seen up to 47 degrees from the western sky. And again, if you don't see it at night, you wake up in the morning and you see that, that uh, Venus has risen before the sun. So uh, that's why the ancients called Venus the morning star and the evening star. It was visible both in the evening and in the morning. But in the morning, it was visible in the eastern sky. At night, it was visible in the western sky. As the sun is the center, and you have Mercury going around the sun, you have Venus going around the sun, you have the Earth. Venus's orbit and Mercury's orbit are, are inferior to the Earth's. Okay, so you don't need an imaginary line. If you draw different positions of Mercury and you make a straight line from the Sun to Mercury and you make a straight line from Earth to the Sun and then draw a straight line from Earth to Mercury. Okay, what is that angle? It's a very small angle, right? Draw another angle. It's a little larger angle. Draw another angle. It's a little larger, and then go over here. Draw another angle, a little larger, okay? Then what happens? As Mercury goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here, what happens to that angle? It goes down, it goes down, it goes down, it goes down, and when Mercury is in here, the angle goes down, we call that superior conjunction. So now Mercury is uh, behind the sun. So that means the angle can range from zero degrees all the way to some large number, and then it goes down after that. So Mercury has to always be close to the sun. Same argument can be made for Venus, okay? So let's actually calculate that angle. It turns out that that angle occurs, this theta, so here's the distance from the Earth to the sun, and if I draw uh, Mercury here, this, this position, if I make a 90 degree angle here, 90 degree angle, it ends up that this gives me the smallest, the largest angle here, theta. Theta max. So that's known as the maximum elongation of Mercury, and then we'll do one for Venus. So this is the distance between the Sun and Mercury. This is Mercury. And this is the distance between, uh, let's see here, this is the distance between the Sun and Earth. Sun and Earth, and then this is Sun and Mercury. This is the distance between Mercury and the Earth. Okay, so how are we gonna uh, prove this? Well, we're gonna do, I prefer to use the distance between the Sun and Mercury and the distance between the Sun and the Earth, because that's already, we can find that out from the tables, right? So we're gonna say, Sine of this angle, sine of theta, is here. This is a, a, a right triangle. This is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So sine of this is opposite over hypotenuse. So I don't have to use the adjacent. Opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta max 
equals dsm over dse. Well, of course, the distance between the Sun and Mercury, distance between Sun and Earth, they change over the course of the year because uh, the orbits of the planets are elliptical. But let's take an average value. Uh, the distance between the, the Mercury and the Sun, let's assume that Mercury is the farthest possible it can be from the Sun. You know, so if Mercury's orbit is a little elliptical, imagine Mercury is the farthest it can be. That's known as aphelion. So I'll use the distance between Sun and Mercury, aphelion. Aphelion, so Mercury is the farthest. And let's assume that distance between Earth and the Sun is the closest it could possibly be. Okay, so the Earth is closer to the Sun. Okay, so that's distance between Sun and Earth, perihelion. Perihelion. That's going to give you the most maximum possible angle that Mercury can be from the Sun. Okay, if the Earth is close to the Sun and uh, uh, if uh, Mercury is far from the Sun. Okay. So here it is. The distance between Mercury and the Sun at aphelion is 6.98 times 10 to the 7 kilometer. The distance between the Sun and the Earth at perihelion is 1.471 times 10 to the 7 times 10 to the uh, uh, 8 kilometer. Okay, so sine of the angle, theta max, so let's do this. You divide these two numbers, and you get sine of theta max is 0.4745. Then you take the inverse sine of this, 28.3 degrees. Boy, Copernicus would have loved this, right? Because this ex exactly agrees with Copernicus's theory. So the maximum that Mercury can be buried from the sun is 28.3 degrees. How about Venus? Well, all we have to do is adjust this and uh, do it for Venus. Well, this one will still stay the same, Sun, Earth. So the bottom will stay the same. Venus's orbit is larger. So when Venus is over here, okay, the angle is going to be larger, right? But still going to have a maximum value. So uh, at aphelion, the distance of Venus from the Sun is 1.089. 1.089 times 10 to the 8 kilometers. Notice the units are canceling here, and this is unitless. So we basically take the ratio of 1.089 divided by 1.471. You get uh, here 0.7. 0.7403, take the inverse sine of it, 47.76 degrees, so 47 degrees, so about 20 degrees more, so if the sun sets in the western sky, which is in, this, in my case it's in that direction, then Mercury, uh, Venus can be up to about halfway up the sky, a little more than halfway. Because 45 degrees is halfway, right? So a little bit more, you can You have to always look in that direction or in the morning. So you can see this is the beauty of science that uh, we could use math and science together. And historically, this was a very, very famous problem. And we could prove this with uh, some uh, math and some science put together. Thank you very much.